G'day team, patch 6.0 is finally here, super exciting, we're entering into the 6th episode of Valorant, sort of the start of 2023 VCT and everything starts and revolves around this patch, the new map Lotus, a couple of agent changes and utility changes, new changes to split as well, I've already covered some of the notes in my previous couple of videos, but we're going to just go through all the patch notes today and break down anything that is kind of interesting and obscure and break down what that means for you guys there are a couple of little things in there uh, which could have some big impact too so let's have a look at these notes this is just like a act hype trailer with some clips of the new map and some streamers and stuff but let's get into the patch notes right now so here we are 11th of january 2023 patch 6.0 joe allen here happy new year y'all we're starting off with 2023 with patch 6.0 from our new map lotus which should definitely check out we definitely will the Araxis skin line looks pretty sick battle pass and rank refresh complete so you'll probably drop out of your current tier and be out on the climb back up through this new episode so we've got some changes in this patch we wanted to let you know about but read below our split returning updates uh a change to ranked rating uh wins and losses so this is really really cool and what many players have asked for i'm actually stoked on this the ability to finally favorite variants this is a step in the right direction so gameplay system updates uh we've reworked the way that guns process zoom for ads and scopes in toggle zoom now i'm a hold zoom kind of guy for all of you that do use toggle uh, apparently there was some kind of packet loss or ping jitter when uh when toggling zoom sometimes so hopefully that's fixed for all of you toggle zoomers sounds like a 15 year old hacker toggling zoomer anyways new map lotus three site map variety of rotations unlock the secrets behind the doors of these ancient ruins. we're going to be doing a deep dive into agents and important map positions and map flow and things like that over the coming couple of weeks i'm going to be deep diving into a bunch of stuff for lotus so lotus is going to go into competitive and unrated in 6.1 which is probably in two weeks there's a special lotus queue for queuing specifically lotus and it's also going to be thrown into swift play as well split so i'll link my split video in the cards here but here are the changes overall theme is making it a little bit easier for the attackers if we jump over to this tab from runitback.gg you can see split having in its lifetime, this is a 54.17% defending round win rate at the pro level, which is higher than Ascent, which is even still, I think, a bit defensive-sided. Uh, Pearl, you can see, is quite attacking-sided, but all of these things are all within sort of 1%, 2% either way of the of 50%. And so 54% versus 45%, that's a 9% gap. So they're wanting to rebalance attack and defense sides. And this is how they're doing it. So they've made A main a little bit wider and less of a trap for attackers and giving them more options to push through with these two levels now. They've reduced the size of this box, giving attackers another little bit of play space here. Also makes this top of the box a little bit more interesting to play around as well. They've removed this double angle on heaven. And so now it's a single angle, heaven, heaven rafters finishes here. And also this box is now taller. This short box was always awkward to play around because of the elevation from a main, you would get head glitched unless you were crouching. So this is just making this a more playable area. They've simplified a tower or a heaven. And so now there's no longer two different headline levels for the attackers as they swing up ramp into tower. Also remove this bin, removing an, just another cheeky angle, head glitch sort of angle that's hard to spot and clear out. In mid, they've removed this ledge. So this is simplification. You, there was also some kind of trick jump that you could get up onto this box. They've remo removed that as well. And you can now silently jump onto these boxes. This is now just a little bit taller, so you can silent drop down outside of here so really nice change here for both sides simplifying b tower or b heaven removing this bin here so less angles for the attackers to clear out and this is a really nice change in b hell or they've called this the b rope pocket uh they've removed this corner here and made it a, a 45 degree angle so this is now easier space to play around there's no longer this really deep corner pocket to clear out and that's the changes for split so not as drastic as i think some people were expecting but i'm hoping that as shown with fracture and pearl some subtle changes can go a long way into the feeling and the play of the map so with those two coming in, Bind and Breeze are out of competitive and unrated immediately. So only six maps in the current competitive rotation, but they are still playable in all other modes. So Swift Play, Spike Rush, they're all going to have the complete nine maps. This is a pretty, pretty big change and a big reaction to this change as well. Dark cover placed inside walls will now fall at the height of nearby ground. So that means the red arrow where you would be able to like stick an omen smoke inside of a wall is now completely gone. And Omen one-ways will now rely on actual map geometry. So if there's a little ledge or something you can put the one-way on that you will still be able to do that. There's a video that I made with a bunch of one-ways correction about that. There apparently is a fracture 
uh, one way for a main as well. But if you want to check out that video with all of the important one ways you need to know for patch 6.0, that's in there. I do really like the reasoning for this change. It kind of feels something that outside of the game one way smokes are a part of valorant but they are difficult to play against and we want to keep them limited to intentional and understandable areas we'll keep a close eye on how this impacts omen's power levels so as as the enemy team coming up against a one way understanding where it's possible to have a one way and not just anywhere stuck inside of a wall i think is healthy for the game Agent Utility, so in the last patch, they did a bunch of changes. So all utility interacts with all other utility now. Expanding upon that, most Agent Utility, except for Molotovs, which has not yet been implemented, I'm hoping in the next patch that will, will now damage the Lotus Breakable Door, as well as the wall plates on Ascent and Haven. So tiles for, so tiles for Ascent and Garage for Haven have like wall plates that are breakable if you shoot them. Util will now break those as well. And competitive updates. So overall changes below to ranked rating gains and losses feel more consistent and reduce the effect stomps have on your RR. We'll keep a close eye on the data and make additional adjustments as necessary. So episode reset reminder, like I said before, you just have to regain your rank and reclimb to what you were before. You're gonna be dropped into a lower tier. For all players, so this is the major change. Ranked rating gains and losses will depend slightly more on win-loss and less on the exact round differential of the match. The way it used to work is that if you got like a 13-1, you would get a bunch of bonus RR. And if you got stomped the opposite way, you would lose a bunch. No matter what your performance was, even if you lost 13-1 but and you yourself went like 24 and 12, you would still lose a bunch of MR because of the team diff effectively. So players experience too wide of RR gains losses from match based on round differential. One win could give 12 RR and the next could give 20. We're making this change to reduce that swing of RR. Winning is still the most important way to climb. So as long as you are winning more than you're losing, you will be climbing. Your performance will still impact your RR gain loss, but the round differential is going to have less of an impact, which I think overall is a good change. As long as you get the win, you should be rewarded for that. Progression updates. Variant favorites are here. We've heard your feedback and added the ability to favorite specific variants of your gun skins. Now, I am a big fan of this. For example, I have the RGX, but I hate the green variant and just want to be able to use the other ones, but I couldn't add it into my favorite rotation because whenever I get the green one, I'd be really sad and not want to use it that game. So this is really cool. The next step, the ultimate dream for me is being able to favorite gun variant and buddy combos as like a little package so that your buddy isn't tied to your gun, but is tied to your favorite variant. That's probably a bit of an overhaul for their system the way it currently works. And I'm still fine to keep like, you know, you only have one or two of each buddy, so you could only use one or two per variant. Maybe that would be annoying for some people. I don't know. Some people will probably prefer that you could just use the same buddy on seven different of your favorite skins. I might be in the minority there, but for me, I love like getting really specific with my gun and buddy combos and being able to have specific and different buddies for different skin variants on each gun class would be really, really nice for me, but I don't think that's ever gonna happen. Let me know if you agree. Would you prefer to have one buddy per gun or one buddy per skin variant? Maybe there's a way to do both where you could attach your bunny to the gun or you have the option to do it to specific variants. That could work. I think that's doable. Come on, Riot. And here we have the bug fixes. Scent market door, no longer being able to destroy by ability being used on the wall next to it, which would happen sometimes. Cypher's tripwire going through Sage's barrier orb, no longer possible. Fixed a bug where Viper was able to deactivate her ultimate Viper's bit while suppressed. This is a very niche interaction, but there's definitely some sick outplays with KO, niche situations where you want to force the Viper to keep her ult up rather than dropping it. Very, very cool. Various gameplay damage interactions fixed. So if you remember from last patch, Killjoy's lockdown now with all other pieces of util are destroyable by other pieces of damaging util. I definitely noticed with Brim Molly, it wouldn't always destroy it and a bunch of other things. So now Killjoy's Lockdown should interact properly with all other damaging abilities. A fixed Breach Aftershock, Razor Showstopper and Paint Shells damaging allied Killjoy's Nano Swarm. So you should no longer be able to destroy your allies util and all allied util should not damage any other ally util, I believe. It should only be able to damage enemy util. And Chambers Utility should now be damageable by Nano Swarm, Hot Hands, and Blaze. Apparently, in some instances, 
that wasn't happening. So I'd definitely be curious to see if Chamber comes back into the meta on any map, if there's any lineups that you can do to destroy rendezvous locations and catch Chamber out. Very, very cool to see. But that's it for the patch notes. There's lots to cover over the last couple of weeks. I've got some Game Changers Championship videos ready to go on off days. There's the NA Challenges qualifiers happening right now. Some very interesting games are happening today, so I'm looking forward to cover that. And we've got loads of stuff to break down, so heaps of content coming out. And I look forward to producing all of it for you. See you tomorrow.